Hello and welcome. I am Destiny Mamot. This is a news brief. President Bola Tinubu has appealed to protesters not to shut out the oxygen of the country's economy. The president said he understands that the nationwide protests are driven by economic hardship. Speaking in a televised address on Sunday, the president said the economy is on its way to full recovery. Tinubu acknowledged the demands of the protesters, saying he understands their pain and frustration. I'm my fellow Nigerians, I speak to you today with a heavy heart and sense of responsibility. Aware of the turmoil and violent protests unleashed in some of our states. Notably, among the protesters were young Nigerians who desired a better and more progressive country where their dreams, hope, and personal aspiration will be fulfilled. I am especially pained by the laws of lives in Bonn, Jigawa, Kano, Kaduna, and other states, the destruction of facilities in some states, and the wanton looting of supermarkets and shops, contrary to the promise of protest organizers that the protest will be peaceful across the country. The destruction of properties set us back as a nation, as scarred resources will be again used to restore them. I commiserate with the families and relations of those who have died in the protest. We must stop further bloodshed, violence, and destruction. As the president of this country, I must ensure public order in line with the constitutional oath to protect the lives and property of every citizen. Our government will not stand idly by and allow a few with a clear political agenda to tear this nation apart. Under the circumstances, I have enjoined protesters and the organizers to suspend any further protest and create room for dialogue. The president said he has heard the youth loud and clear, adding that the federal government is committed to listening and addressing their concerns. According to him, that we must not let violence and destruction tear our nation apart. We must work together to build a brighter future where every Nigerian can live with dignity and prosperity. As he said, that the task before us is a collective one and that he is leading the charge as our president. And lots of work has gone into stabilizing the economy and must be focused on ensuring that the benefits reach every single Nigerian as promised. These decisions are made were necessary if we must reverse the decades of economic mismanagement that didn't serve us well. Yes, I agree, the box stops on my table, but I can assure you that I am focused fully on delivering the governance to the people, good governance for that matter. In the past 14 months, our government has made significant strides and rebuilding the foundation of our economy to carry us into a future of plenty and abundance. On the physical side, aggregate government revenue has more than doubled, hitting over 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come this far, coming from a place where our country spent 97% of all our revenue on debt service. We have been able to reduce that to 68% in the last 13 months. We have also cleared legitimate outstanding foreign exchange obligations of about 5 billion without any adverse impact on our programs. This has given us more financial freedom and a room to spend more money 
or you, our citizens, to fund essential social services like education and health care. It has also led to our state and local government receiving highest allocation ever in our country history from the Federation account. We have also embarked on major infrastructure projects across the country. We are working to complete inherited projects critical to our economic prosperity, including roads, bridges, railways, power and oil and gas development. Notably, the Lagos Calaba Coastal Highway and Sokoto Badagri Highway projects will open up existing connecting states, creating thousands of jobs and boosting economic output through trade, tourism, and cultural integration. According to the president, he says his administration is working very hard to improve and expand our national infrastructure and create more opportunities for the young ones. In his words, let nobody misinform and miseducate you about your country or tell you that your government does not care about you. Although there have been many dashed hopes in the past, we are in a new era of renewed hope. We're working hard for you and the results will soon be visible and concrete for everyone to see, feel and enjoy. The nationwide protest tax and bad governance and hunger protest is now in its fourth day. The Renew Hope City and Estate. This project is the first of six we have planned across the nation's geopolitical zones. Each of these cities will include a minimum of 1,000 housing units with Kasana itself set to deliver 3,212 units. In addition to this city project, we are also launching the Renew Hope Estate in every state, each comprising 500 housing units. Our goal is to complete a total of 100,000 housing units over the next three years. This initiative it's not only about providing homes, but also about creating thousands of jobs across the nation, as well as stimulating economic growth. We are providing incentives to farmers to increase food production at affordable prices. I've directed that tariffs and other import duties should be removed on rice, wheat, milk, sorghum, and drugs, and other pharmaceutical medical supplies for the next six months, and the first instance to help drive down the prices. I have been meeting with our governors and key ministers to accelerate food production. We've distributed fertilizers. Our target is to cultivate more than 10 million hectares of land to, to grow what we eat. The federal government will provide all necessary incentives for this initiative, whilst the state provides the land. Although the protests witnessed significant turnout in several parts of the country on the first day, the number dropped on day two and further declined on the third day. In some northern states, the protest was marred by violence, looting, and destruction of public and private properties, while in the south, demonstrations have been largely peaceful. The protest is built to take place from 1st to 10th of August. Which will put millions of our people to work and further increase food production. In the past few months, we have also ordered mechanized farming equipment, such as tractors and planters, worth billions of naira from the United States, Belarus, and Brazil. I can confirm to you that the equipment is on the way. My dear Nigerians, especially our youths, I have heard you loud and clear. I understand the pain and the frustration that drive this protest. 
And I want to assure you that our government is committed to listening and addressing the concerns of our citizens. But we must not let violence and destruction tear our nation apart. We must work together to build a brighter future where every Nigerian can live with dignity and prosperity. Let's choose hope over fear, unity over division, and progress over stagnation. The economy is recovering. Please, don't shut out this oxygen. Now that we have been enjoying democratic governance for 25 years, do not let the extremists of the enemies of democracy use you to promote an unconstitutional agenda that will set us back on our democratic journey. Forward ever, backward never. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.